Hello and welcome to the D&D world of Faerun, home to such games as Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights. What are we doing here? Well, we are here because there is a new Crusader Kings 2 mod and we're going to try it out. Now, this mod is, they've named it version 0 0.3, I think we're on 0 0.3.3, .3, and effectively that means it's not finished. There's a lot in this mod which they have ideas for, and they've got a little bit implemented, but not everything. There's not a lot of unique events, but there are some interesting systems, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, what character are we going to be playing? Well, we're right down here, right down here, in a very familiar place, given we just finished Baldur's Gate, which is the Sword Coast. And we are in fact in Coastway. Our domain is the Friendly Arm Inn, which is a very common place for us to visit. You see it's a part of the the Jure Kingdom of Baldur's Gate, and we've got that plus the Temple of Wisdom. So we've not got an awful lot. We are playing as Bentley, I'm just trying to move this out of the way, we'll get to it in a second. We're um, playing as Count Bentley Mirrorshade with his wife, Galena. And we also have a few children because there is an option in Crusader Kings to auto-generate families. And I did that as pretty much nobody had a family in the game and it would lead to a lot of very odd game ends for a lot of different places around the map. So, we're going to be playing as this guy. He's a gnome. And not only is he a gnome, he's a wizard. A renowned wizard. And that means we can cast magic. For instance, on our wife Galena, we can cast a friend spell. Friend spell increases their opinion of us, but once they realize what's going on, their opinion will go down. So just simple stuff like that, but it's interesting. Also, being a gnome, here's what it does for you. Lowers your martial, gives you stewardship, gives you learning. Fairly similar to um, d and I imagine. So let's read this pop-up, which I have been ignoring. Spells can be cast in two different ways, either via the intrigue screen or via targeted decisions. While cantrips can be cast as long as they are not in cooldown, other spells are split into minor, moderate, and major categories. Each has a maximum number that can be cast based on your class level. All wizards know a basic set of universal spells and can learn more through research. So do we actually have any spells in the intrigue menu? Let me just double check that. We do have a wizard spell book, yep. And we can cast comprehend languages, which allows us to get diplomacy plus two. Okay. That's occasionally useful. Not super useful, but occasionally. Right, let's go into the normal Crusader Kings style of things. First thing that we want to do is we want to figure out what our succession law is. That way we can figure out how to not get a game over. Our succession law is Cognatic Gavel Kind. Now that's not too bad. That basically means it's going to be our oldest child, no matter what inherits. However, what it means is if we were to, say, conquer Beragost here, it would split it between... Uh, the two children when we die. So we obviously don't want that, but apart from that, it's mostly okay. What does our religion do? Uh, our religion, rulers can uh, can order adult landed courtiers to take the vows, so that basically means you can remove them from succession, which is an interesting idea. So if we know that we're about to die, we could say, hey, son, I know that you're uh, gonna inherit one of our two titles. I'm gonna make you go become a monk somewhere, and then our titles will all go to one person. So that's an option. Priests, temple holders can inherit titles. All right. Priests can marry. Religion allows women to own uh, temple holdings. No opinion penalty against female rulers and heirs. That's useful. And there is and can exist no religious head. Okay, so all very straightforward and we just have feudal as our government type. So all of that's fairly straightforward. So uh, next thing that we've done, we have an heir. Our heir, we can't really do anything about them. Is our son a better heir? Not really. Stats are pretty much garbage on both of them, but that's fine. Um, do we have any kind of... No, we don't have anything in our treasury, so no stats are going to go up. Okay, let's have a look at our council. Our council appears to be made up of dwarfs. These are gnomes. Alright, well, that's uh, first insult out of the way. Um, do humans... Uh, you're also a gnome. Okay, let me find somebody else. We do have other ones. We have uh, you. You're a human. So you have different traits. And also... You don't just have to be a wizard, you can be many other classes, like this guy is a fighter, and he gets a lot of benefit for it. Um, there are also some other ones, if I remember right, I think it's this one? It's somewhere up here, ah, yes, there you go. You have kobolds, who have lots of intrigue, but aren't very good at fighting. 
Uh, and uh, somewhere over... Ah, right, yes, over here we get some drow. Oh no, these are undead, never mind. Uh, but yeah, there's an undead one. Definitely no fertility there. And a legendary paladin. An undead paladin, huh? That's an interesting story. I'm sure there's lore for it. In fact, I'm sure there's lore for everything in here. This is a very expansive world. Um, so if we head here, we now have an elf, who is also a wizard. And uh, I think that might be all the ones I remember being unique around here. There are some others. There's Oh, there we go. There's there's the, another one. There's a hobgoblin. Just in case you're wondering about the different types of opinions. I believe there is a dragon somewhere. Um, in fact, we can probably find the dragon by going to character list. Going to all and then just sorting by age. There you go. There's a dragon. Although I think this dragon... Yeah, okay, isn't in charge of anything. So there's the vast swamp. So if we go over here, there is where the dragon lives. So, uh, what type, do we have a type of dragon? It's a black dragon. Okay, so those are, I think, were the... Yeah, poison acid type dragons. Interesting. Oh, they also had a new succession law as well. Let's go and have a look at that. So they, they're a mageocracy. Which is basically uh, whoever's the best at magic gets to um, be in charge, I think. Or those with magic get to vote. It's very odd. Uh, and then Draconic, you get some different stuff. So you can have two concubines and uh, women can have two consorts. Hmm, okay. Uh, dra dragons are very... Um, yeah. Try to think of the right word. No, I don't have a word. Alright, we're going to move on. Anyway, so back to playing Crusader Kings. Um, over here, is anybody, like, do you have a better job? You could be a steward, okay. Our steward would be an awful person at diplomacy. Do we have anyone better at diplomacy? Yeah, you are better at diplomacy, and that's my son. So, are you better at anything else? You aren't. So I could replace you with him, and then fire you and put somebody else in charge. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to change council position, make you my steward. Although Steward is generally a better position to have a higher stat in. I like having the extra stats in Chancellor as well because it gets us some opinion. So I'm going to do that. Or it can get us some opinion. Also this guy right here because he's my son is going to vote for me because he's a loyalist. So that all works out. We'll figure out what we're doing with these guys in a second. Uh, probably going to collect taxes I'd guess on my Steward because it's just generally good. Gives you a tax modifier. Here for our Marshal. Um, organize the army is pointless because we don't have a retinue and we don't have a horde. So we're going to go to train troops because that will give us more troops. Again, fairly straightforward. We're going to leave our spy master on scheming. So this is discovering plots against us. Although we could also try and sabotage places nearby, which is a potential option for us. Um, our court chaplain. There are some societies that's worth mentioning. The reason I'm mentioning that is because she can try and hunt apo uh, apostates. There are some unique societies, including the cult of the dragon. The Cult of Admodius, Shadow Thieves. Basically, there are a lot of cults in here. Uh, is there anything we can join? Must be a sinner. Um, must not be kind. Uh, must be Bard, Rogue, or Shadow. I believe Shadow is a mix of multiple classes, from what uh, they were saying in the description. Harpers, we need to have an Intrigue of 10. Okay. And the Wolf Warriors, uh, we would need to have a different religion. Alright, so essentially we can join none of these right now because we're not good enough. We could, well, no we can't. I was going to say we could join one if we could get our Intrigue to 10, but our Intrigue is very far from 10. So we can't join the Harpers. A semi-secret organization dedicated to promoting God-preserving history and maintaining the balance between civilization and nature. Yes, we can't join them. Um, okay, what, what decisions have we got? So we can choose a patron deity. I'm also going to untick Wizard Spellbook from being a kind of uh, important decision. The reason we're going to do that is because if we had it ticked, we would never actually learn about other important decisions. Like, we never learn that we need a court physician because it would always be up there. So, um, I'm going to choose a patron deity. Let's see. What we're we looking for, because each patron deity basically gives you some stats. So, if we have a look here, you'll see here that this one gives us diplomacy, stewardship, and same trait opinion. This one gives us health, stewardship, and same trait opinion. This one gives us martial stewardship, uh, personal combat skill, and same trait opinion. Um, I don't know. I think I'd like to improve my martial. So, uh, we could go for the god of mining. 
Okay. Who else have we got? We have uh, the Wild uh, Wanderer, who would give us Attrition Minus, which is interesting for later. Um, so that one's a good one for later. Uh, this one would give us Martial and Intrigue. Hmm, okay. Intriguing. Um, martial Personal Combat Skill. The God of Vigilance and Defense. Anyone else? Uh, we could go for the God of Hatred. Okay. Um, or the God of Invention and Construction. That's an intriguing one as well. It's a little slow for what I'm aiming for. Uh, I think we're going to go background and we're going to have the God of Vigilance and Defense. Because we're going to need that. Because if we have a look around us, we have some interesting uh, people surrounding us. So, to the south, we have Beragost. And they are most likely our only target for conquest. They are, well, actually, to be fair, we also have Candlekeep. Um, but we have Beragost. And Beragost has about the same number of troops. They have 705. How many do we have? We have 557. So we can get there. If we unpause, we would probably get close to them because we just had an extra 25% uh, added to ours due to our um, Marshal. But we need to wait for it to recharge a little bit. Um, and we also could probably get some more if I raised my personal Marshal skill up a little bit. So we can get close to them. Um, so there may be our big target. Candlekeep also exists with Gorion. Um, by the way, there are some potential spoilers for some of the games. There is definitely a spoiler related to Gorion, or at least related to something to do with him. So um, we're going to ignore that for just now. But they're actually, they're potentially someone we could attack. Do we have a reason to attack? Yes. Ah, we have a, uh, a Ducal Conquest if we had some piety, because we're in the same duchy. Okay. Uh, is that the same with Baragost? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's probably what we want to do. What duchy are we in? We're in a duchy of the Sword Coast. Perfect. Right, so we could potentially attack those two. We also have next to us Baldur's Gate, who are the big power in the close region. So they have about 3,000 troops. They're someone we don't want to mess with, and we really don't want messing with us. Um, they are also part of the same kingdom as us, which is the Baldur's Gate kingdom. So they're kind of the biggest player in that kingdom. To the south, we have Am, who are probably uh, the biggest player in the close region. They only have, yeah, they're slightly stronger than Baldur's Gate by about a thousand, but they would have to work their way through us to get there. And they're also a bit kind of large and unwieldy, so there's potential to fight them off. What's the terrain like? We got farmlands, plains, plains, forest. Yeah, so if we were to at some point be at war with Am, we'd be wanting to hit Nashkel and basically hold Nashkel completely. Because it's in hills, so they would, ha and there's only really one way round, so they can either go the long way round here or straight through that, uh, hit the hills that we control. In fact, if we could start controlling this bit as well, then they would have no chance to make their way up towards us. So that's an interesting idea. Um, as we head up, my end goal is to, I think, control the whole of the Sword Coast. So I would want to be heading all the way up here. So there's not really a lot of huge places. There's Daggerford up here, which has not that much strength. And there's a few other places up here that don't really have as much strength. What might cause us issues are these two places here, and other ones like it, the Cloakwood and Durlag's Tower. Now you'll notice that these ones are just controlled by something called Monster Mob, with a little description called Monster. Well, essentially what this means is these are not actual people in Crusader Kings. Now, they have to be, because that's the way the game works. A province is controlled by a person. But that is not technically how this works. You see, the fertility is minus a very weird number. How this works is, once you attack them, it will then bounce you back. It will then be like, alright, here's an event, and the event will say, a bunch of things are going to spawn. So if we have a look at this province, a bunch of goblins are going to spawn. And then you will fight around, you will fight the goblin army. Now, I don't entirely know how strong they are. In my test game, I attacked Durlag's Tower, and they came out with 2,000 troops. So that would mean that they're roughly on par with Baldur's Gate in terms of strength. But they also have a green dragon. So I don't know whether the goblins are weaker than the green dragon. I would assume that they are. So I would assume that if we were to attack Cloakwood, we would be attacked by a smaller army coming back. But we do have a reason to declare war on them we have monster extermination. So we can just basically go in there, kill all the monsters, and look at that, we're good. So that's an option. Oh, I also missed this one, Sage's Bay, but it's also controlled by monsters. What monster's over there? A red dragon. 
Oh, lots of dragons. Well, I suppose this is, you know, dungeons and dragons. Uh, and then we have Peld Vale over here to the top right. And they are also, you know, actually they're a little bit closer than Baragost in terms of somebody we could attack. Yeah, yeah, okay. They're, they're a potential one as well. Um, I just want to see. We only have a border dispute because they are in a different duchy from us. So if I go and look at the duchies, they're actually in the Wood of the Sharp Teeth duchy. And then if I go to... Are they actually in our kingdom? No, they're actually in a different kingdom. And I think that means... Yeah, they're, they're are in a different area. They're not in the Sword Coast, technically, for the purposes of this. So, interesting. Okay, so... What do we want to do first? Well, we want to get our marshal up so we actually have enough troops to fight the people around us. Uh, what kind of ambitions do we have? Oh, we have some new ones at the end. So we can try and level up as a wizard. Level up as a bard. Oh, so we can multi-class? That's intriguing. I did not know we could multi-class. Okay. I want to be a better wizard. Is there anything else we could do, though? Just while we're looking at it. Any crusader kingy ones that make sense? Become King of Baldur's Gate is intriguing because it gives us more uh, Cassus Belly reasons to attack places, but that's not necessarily going to be what we want to do. I think I'm going to try and level up as a wizard. We're going to be a better wizard. And then I want to improve our marshal so we can actually raise some troops and go to war. So that will now give us seven marshal. Does that update straight away? I think you have to unpause for that to update. Okay, next step. Recruit a court physician. We're not going to do that because I want to keep our money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find one. So we're going to go with Kellum. He seems alright. He's got reasonable stats. Go with that. Hey, is Tyx not the, um... There are a lot of people in from the, um... Like, from the various games and various lore places. Tyx, I think, was a companion you could recruit in Baldur's Gate. Interesting. Okay. I believe he was also evil, which is why we didn't. But, uh, that's fine. Uh, designated Regent? Uh, I'm just going to make that my wife. She'll generally have my best interests at heart, I would hope. And then we also need, just because I saw it there, a court tutor so that we're not handling all of the children's child events, uh, like childhood events. So, uh, we're looking for somebody who is, generally we're looking for green up here. Uh, diligent. I think that's a good one. Yeah, and then they have above 12 and 1 stat. So it's going to be my daughter. Cool. We have an unmarried heir. My daughter should marry. Let's see, who, who's she going to marry? We'll do that. Um, well, I want her to marry somebody who's going to cover some of her uh, weaknesses. So maybe Marshall, because that would give us a potential commander as well. Um, you can marry Harry. Who's Harry? He's from Thoras. And he's a um, Draven. Okay. Sure, you're going to marry Harry. Who is a human. Oh, okay. Sure, you're going to marry this human. Yes, everybody's okay with that. Awesome. Sounds good to me. And then my son should probably also marry. Who's he going to marry? Um, I don't know. Let's see. So again, we're looking at stats. Probably stewardship is the one we're wanting to get there. Um, a lot of people have bad st uh, stats in this at the start, which is interesting. Um, maybe I'm going to marry him to June. There we go. You can marry another human. So we're both marrying humans. So, interesting. Okay then, let's unpause the game. And speed it up a little bit. So, I've decided to accept your suggestion that they get married. Fantastic. So we now have a new person in our court. Who is Harry? Harry, uh, let's have a look here at our commander. So he's better than Tyax, so let's put in Harry. Perfect. So we have a new commander. How many troops do we now have? We now have 600. We now have... Um, it's going to be 680. It's still not a ton. If we have a look here... Yeah, we're going to have roughly the same size of army as the people around us, which... We'll have slightly more than Candlekeep. Um, are we as good a wizard as he is? So we're renowned. So we're level 5. And he's only a level 3 wizard. Ha! Huh. We're better at wizardry stuff. I don't know what that does, but we're better at it. These two have got married. Fantastic. Right. Let's leave it unpaused for a second or two. And see what kind of thing is going to happen. You know what we should do? I'm going to set Baldur's Gate to special interest. And I'm going to set Am to special interest. As they're kind of the major players in the region. So I want to know what's going on with them. The cook had prepared a magnificent meal with lots of different fruits, various kinds of meat, plenty of freshly baked bread, and several mature cheeses. Um, you know what? We're, 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 uh, we're gonna be, uh, temperate. 
Yeah, we're not going to do any of that lustness stuff. Yeah, fantastic. We're getting more good traits. Okay, so they've already been to war and already taken land. Oh, okay. So Am are immediately expanding. Okay, well, that's not worrying at all. Um, how many troops do we have now? Yeah, we still need to wait for that to recharge. It's going to take a little bit for it to charge up to full strength, but we need to do that, otherwise it's going to be difficult. Hey, we can get a commander trait. Uh, that might be very useful. Um, I think what I want to do... Probably take Unyielding. Unyielding has no negative. It gives us defense just like Defender, but not as much, obviously. And it gives us morale defense, which means we'll fight for longer. Yeah, a solid rock breaks the best steel. My men will be that rock. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. So hopefully that will allow us a little advantage in these wars to come. The blade spread to the wield. The victorious blade, the elusive order of the Eldrith Veluthra, have expanded their influence to the Weld. A branch of their sect has established itself in the forest of the Weld, from where they control the surrounding countryside. All across Faerun, the victorious blade are now hunting those they see as obstacles to their obscure plans. Now, I'd assume that this is using the same stuff, well, you can see it in the top, that it's using the same stuff the assassins used in the base game. But that's a sun elf. What's a sun elf? It's just an elf. Okay, fair enough. Uh, they're an expert shadow, which gives you an extra siege. Okay, I suppose because they're uh, sneaking into places and uh, causing all sorts of hassle before you get there. Paladin? And so there, there's a multi-class, right? So we got a paladin and an expert shadow. Well, maybe? I don't know if Paladin's a class. Anyway, I know it is in d and I don't know if it's a class here or whether it's like a state of being. And they're in there a Fenoman. Okay, so they follow the elven god of outcasts. Hmm. Interesting. All right, we'll continue. Uh, Baldur's Gate is declared the Baldurian Roaring Shurian War for the city of a uh, Lathtarl Lantern. So I believe that because they've declared for a city, this is because they are a merchant republic. Yep, and they're basically able to declare for cities. Oh, was he or, or uh, was he always married to an elf? Don't believe he was, but you know now he is. Okay. Um, right. How many troops do we have? Seven hundred and forty. Candle keep. Seven hundred and eighty. So they did the same thing that we did. Shadow druids. Eight hundred. So everywhere around here is uh, basically ramping up. Um, are there any mercenaries we can get? Let's have a look. I actually want to look at cost rather than strength. Yeah, so we need 100 to get any, and then they cost 5 a month. So if we got any, we would have to use them immediately. We would have to get them and use them. My court physician has suggested I buy him some books on anatomy and herbalism so he can improve his skills. I don't think we need that right now. I think we're okay. I think because we're saving up money, we don't necessarily need to do that. My wife is pregnant. Oh, fantastic. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the ages work out. Usually in Crusader Kings, uh, the ages would work out that between, like, say, was it 18 and 30, you're likely to have children. Like, that's going to level for that. And then you're likely to die around age 50. That's generally the way I see it. Minus any, you know, health traits giving you positive health or negative health and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, this is not true for gnomes. Our wife has just become pregnant at 68. And we are still alive at 73. So obviously gnomes have something else going on. Now it doesn't say how much health they've been given in game. So that would imply to me it's something in the background. So I have no idea. Uh, I guess we're going to have to wait till a gnome dies. And then that will give us a rough idea of when a gnome dies. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we're about to reach our 100 gold goal. Which is interesting. Your daily routine involves repeatedly swinging your blade at a training dummy. However, you can only learn so much from fighting an inanimate enemy, and the practice gets dreadfully dull after a while. Uh, do I want to become friends with my son and also train with them? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, so he's accepted the peace offer and the duke has become stronger. In fact, a lot stronger. Look at that. From that one city, he's now up an extra thousand. Although he might have been up a thousand already. I might have missed that. Anyway. Yes, so she is now taking the city. Okay, so that's slightly worrying for us, but nothing that we really need to uh, immediately panic about. We have a new son. Our son is smart, and he's a gnome. 
which you would expect. If our son wasn't a gnome, we'd be having some questions. Um, I just want to check as well. So the Duchy of the Sword Coast has these four in it. So it doesn't have the one at the edge in it. And to create it, we would need to have over 51... Yeah, so what we'd have to do is we'd have to have three of these. Because we have to have over 51%. So that means that once we take, say, Candlekeep, we then have to then take Baragost. Otherwise, we will lose it due to having Gavelkind. And that also means, if we go in here and have a look at it, to create it, we need 194.8 um, gold. So basically, that means that to actually get it, we need to have the money the moment we conquer the last province. So that's going to be interesting. Anyway, I am going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, all that sort of stuff. It really helps the channel grow and it helps the series grow as well. And if you want to find out how to install the mod, I just put up a video which is explaining entirely the install process and how to go through it. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.